In the city of Manila in the 17th and 18th centuries, during the Spanish time, some women were inspired to form a community life under the spiritual guidance of the religious orders who came to bring Christianity to the Philippine Islands in the end of the 16th century. The oldest among them was Francisca. Francisca was the daughter of Simon de Fuentes and Ana Maria del Castillo y Tamayo, born in Intramuros, Manila in 1647. She was given in marriage in 1672 to a gentleman who by God's design did not live long, leaving her a childless young widow. Francisca spent her time with much perseverance and mental and vocal prayers and was charitable to the poor and the sick in the old city of Intramuros. She was joined by three pious women and they received the habit of the tertiary order of St. Dominic in 1682. They petitioned to live in community, especially Mother Francisca. Because of her persistence, Father Juan de Santo Domingo called her impertinente. In a prophetic tone, she replied, Father Prior, the Braterio will be constructed, and your reverence will see it. Indeed, Father Juan de Santo Domingo saw everything happen as she has said it. In fact, he actually did everything. The petition to live in community was granted by the Master General of the Friars Preacher, Antonino Cloche, on January 11, 1688. The Beaterio, under the patronage of St. Catherine of Siena, was formally established on July 26, 1696, with the profession of vows of Mother Francisca and seven other Beatas. Mother Francisca was appointed as the first prioress. The Beatas grew in their spiritual life while serving the needy around them. Thus, the Beaterio de Santa Catalina became the first religious community in the Philippines. But their joy would not last very long, for in 1703, the Beatas were caught up in the middle of a dispute between high ecclesiastical authorities over canonical matters of jurisdiction. This resulted to their excommunication by the Archbishop and went on exile to Santa Potenciana for over two years. The Beatas were free to go home to their families, but they opted to stay and remain with Mother Francisca, living in community. With deep confidence, Mother Francisca said, God cannot be resisted. The Beatas returned to the Beaterio in 1706. With the blessing of the Archbishop of Manila, the Beatas opened the Beaterio to a large number of young native girls to be educated in the faith and perfection of Christian life. In the Beaterio, the young native girls were provided with protection, security, and education. Thus, the Beaterio de Santa Catalina de Sena became the first institution for native girls. Eventually, the Beaterio accepted Spanish girls or mestizos, where they also learned the four R's, religion, reading, writing, and arithmetic, with music, embroidery, and flower making. Thus, the establishment of the first normal school in the Philippines. Mother Francisca lived a life of penance, fasting, and mortification. Her confessor wrote that when she could no longer rise from her bed, he would give her Holy Communion and she would receive our Lord with supreme joy. She died peacefully on the 24th of August in the year 1711. She was buried in the church of the Colegio de San Juan de Letran. Her tomb was over the steps of the main altar on the Gospel side. She left a memory of exemplary strength and virtues love of the Eucharist, and devotion to the Holy Rosary, compassionate charity of neighbor, strength in trials, penance, love of community, and observance of the rule. Her legacy of dedication and compassionate service to the poor, the sick, and the young lives on through the congregation's apostolate in education, health care, pastoral, and social work in the Philippines and abroad. The congregation
generation that reveres her as mother and example felt inspired to deepen its knowledge of her life, virtues, and charism. Thus, our prayer that she be given as a model to us, to the faithful, not only in the local church, but as well as to the universal church. Therefore, we invite you all to spread devotion to Mother Francisca and invoke her intercession in your needs with the trust of obtaining a miraculous intervention. Let us pause for a moment and pray the prayer of intercession through Mother Francisca. God, our Father, you are glorified in your saints, for in their lives we see the crowning of your gifts. We commend to you the life and example of Mother Francisca del Espíritu Santo de Fuentes. She responded wonderfully to your grace by a life of holiness. As a woman of the Philippines, she drew herself close to you in her service to the sick, to the poor, and the young. We ask by this prayer, in your memory, your special help. May Her Holiness be recognized by the Church as an example of faithfulness for all the people of our land. We ask this through the merits of Jesus, our merciful Savior, and the prayers of Mary, Queen of the Rosary. Amen. May Mother Francisca intercede for us in all our endeavors, now and always.